father of waters, transportation superhighway, sustainer of life. The Mississippi River is many things to our nation. The third largest watershed in the world, it drains an area that stretches from Montana to New York, covering 40% of the country. Its fertile valley is the breadbasket, not only for America, but for the world. The Mississippi forms the backbone of a waterborne transportation system that feeds and fuels America. But if left uncontrolled, the river is a mighty adversary, taking as easily as it gives. Since the dawn of time, the Mississippi has wandered back and forth across its broad valley. Its churning water eats away at the fine-grained alluvial soil along its banks, creating a meandering, serpentine channel. As the river flows around a bend, the faster, more turbulent water moves to the outside of the curve, where it attacks the bank, undercutting to create a bluff. The unsupported earth above falls into the river and is carried away to be deposited somewhere downstream. The slower, more placid water on the inside of the bend cannot carry its sediment load. The sediment drops to the bottom where it accumulates, creating a sandbar. Eventually, the sandbar becomes covered in vegetation and new ground is established. Over time, the bend progressively moves outward until finally, the river eats through the narrow neck of land. The river then takes the shortcut, abandoning the old channel to create an oxbow lake. The water moves much faster through the new cutoff. It attacks the downstream bend even harder, continuing the erosion process. This 1944 map shows the Mississippi River's changes over the years. Spring floods covered huge areas, depositing layers of silt that filled the low spots and nourished the soil. This process repeated itself again and again throughout the valley, leaving the Mississippi Delta broad and flat with rich soil. The Native Americans who lived along the Mississippi adapted to the changing moods of the river they simply moved when the river flooded or changed course. European settlers, however, built permanent structures, then levees to protect their farms and villages from floods. But the mighty Mississippi still meandered, destroying levees, farms, and towns when it decided to change course. The trees that fell in the river created log jams and snags that were a menace to the steamboats that were by then moving people and goods on the river. The constantly shifting channels also left spots that were too shallow for the steamboats. America needed to keep the river where it was to protect the riverbanks from being washed away. Revetment is a protective covering for an earth embankment. The earliest river revetments were simply stone facings along the riverbank. Protecting the dry part of the bank with large rocks, called riprap, was easy enough. But most erosion occurs below the water's surface where the river's forces are unrelenting. Placing rock underwater in the swift current is difficult. A rock dropped in the Mississippi in one place is carried by the current to another spot. An enormous amount of rock is required to ensure coverage. An armored covering was needed that could resist the river's forces, yet be flexible enough to conform to the shape of the bank. The Corps of Engineers began their attempts to rein in the wandering river in the late 1800s. They first turned to the young willow trees that grew in abundance along the river's edge. The willows were tied together to form a flexible wooden mattress, which covered several acres. The mattress was floated into position and sunk with stones. These willow mats were effective, but their construction required thousands of trees and a great deal of manpower. Suitable willows soon became scarce. Willows were sometimes hauled 60 miles or more to make mattresses. The Japanese are credited with originating the idea of stringing together concrete blocks to form an articulated concrete mattress that was durable and easy to place. By the 1920s, 
the Corps of Engineers had adopted the Japanese method. The process evolved and the Corps perfected their use. Today, articulated concrete mats are the fastest, most durable, and cost-effective method of stream bank protection known. The modern revetment program is a regional effort involving three districts of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The Memphis, Vicksburg, and New Orleans districts work as a team to protect the riverbanks along more than 900 miles of river. The mat manufacturing process is conducted at three strategic locations along the river. Corps of Engineers contractors cast the concrete mat at Richardson Landing, just north of Memphis, Tennessee at Delta, Louisiana, across the river from Vicksburg, Mississippi, and at St. Francisville, Louisiana, near Baton Rouge. To begin the casting operation, the contractor rolls out heavy paper to keep the layers of mat from sticking together. A special stainless steel wire fabric is placed on the paper and attached to reusable steel forms. The forms are filled with concrete which is worked by several machines to fill every corner of the forms. The last machine cuts grooves in the surface of the mat. These grooves provide a home for microinvertebrates, which in turn help feed the entire aquatic food chain. The forms are removed, leaving a concrete unit that is 25 feet long and 4 feet wide with 16 separate blocks. This is a square of mat which covers 100 square feet. The squares are cast in stacks 13 layers high. The mat loading unit, operated by the Corps of Engineers Memphis District, picks up the mat with a special crane. The stack is trucked to a loading area where a large floating crane places them two stacks high on a barge. A tow boat moves loaded barges away and brings empty barges into place for loading. Meanwhile, Memphis District's bank grading unit is preparing the Mississippi River's banks to receive the mat. The clearing and snagging crew goes ahead of the grader to clear the trees and pull snags from the water. Then the bank grader arrives on the scene. The 15 cubic yard bucket on the floating drag line is as big as a living room. The dragline barge moves along the 400-foot mooring barge, which is held in place by cables attached to bulldozers on the bank. Other bulldozers grade the bank to a smooth slope. The dragline continues the slope underwater to a depth of about 30 feet. After the bank is prepared, a thin layer of crushed stone is placed at the waterline to protect against wave wash until the mat is placed. This work is done during the fall months when river levels are lowest. The mat sinking unit is operated by the Vicksburg District. Its specialized plant is the only equipment of its type in the world. Mat placement begins with one foot square steel anchor plates that are driven on edge about five feet into the soil. When the cable is pulled tight, the plate rotates underground and provides a strong anchor to hold the mat in place. These anchors are placed about six feet apart along the bank. The mat boat is a special barge with a sloping deck covered with rollers. Gantry cranes on the mat boat pick up two squares of mat at a time from the mat supply barge and place the squares side by side on the rollers. Workers use pry bars to precisely align the squares. Other workers use special tools to tie the squares together to form a flexible concrete mattress that is 140 feet wide. The mat boat is connected to the mooring barge that is floating perpendicular to the bank. The mat boat moves along the mooring barge to lay the mat out on the river bottom. Bulldozers act as mobile anchors to hold everything in place. Once set up, the entire system can be moved as needed by simply adjusting winch cables. The mat boat pulls close to the bank where workers attach cables from the mat to the plate anchors. 
The mat boat then slowly backs out, laying the mat out on the sloping river bottom. More squares are attached and the mat boat continues backing out until it nears the end of the 400 foot mooring barge. If the mat needs to extend farther into the river, the mooring barge can slide alongside other barges called spar barges, much like an extension ladder. The mat boat can place mat up to 900 feet from the water's edge. When the mat reaches the desired length, the mat boat continues to back out, lowering the mat to the river bottom with the launching cables. More mat is laid on the deck before the cables are cut, releasing the underwater mat. The launching cables feed from 36 reels located in the hole of the mat boat. Each cable passes in a figure eight configuration around 12 pulleys that release the cable on the mat boat deck. This ensures that each launching cable is released exactly the same amount to keep the mat straight. The tying tools used to tie the mat together were specially developed just for this purpose. The tool uses a 14 inch long steel wire coated with copper for corrosion resistance. The tool wraps the wire around two stainless steel wires in the mat plus the launching cable. The hundreds of wires wrapped around the launching cable control the mat as it hangs vertically on its way to the bottom. When the mat is released, the mat boat and mooring barge move into the water's edge and then move upstream using the mooring winches. Mats are placed moving upstream and each mat overlaps the one previously laid, like shingles on a roof, so the current cannot get under the mat. A surveyor gives signals to guide the mooring barge into precise alignment with the previous mat. Because the large number of people involved in the mat sinking operation and the remote work locations, the workers live on the river in floating dormitories called quarter boats. The quarter boat complex is completely self-contained, making its own electricity and drinking water. Sewerage is treated on board and trash burns in an incinerator. The galley prepares three hot meals every day. The food is great. They can feed the entire crew of 250 in about 30 minutes. When it's time to move, towboats push the entire floating complex to the next job site. In times of natural disaster, the quarter boats provide food and lodging for up to 500 emergency responders. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers currently has more than 1,000 miles of revetment mat protecting the banks of the Mississippi River. Every major bend from Cairo, Illinois to the Gulf of Mexico has revetment protection. As the initial mat placement nears completion, the emphasis has shifted to maintenance and repair of existing revetment. Less than 1% of the mat needs repair or replacement each year. But since so many miles of revetment are in place, it's still a big job. The core monitors mat conditions as the existing revetments age. Every year, underwater surveys are taken of one-third of each district. The latest surveys are compared with previous ones to see if scour is occurring below the surface. Representatives from all three districts meet annually to plan and prioritize the upcoming work. Most Americans take it for granted that the mighty Mississippi River will remain where it is. The safety of millions of people in cities, towns, and farms along the Mississippi require that the father of waters stays in its current channel. Billions of dollars in our economy also depend on a stable river. Few people realize that life in America depends heavily on the Mississippi River and ultimately on the 150,000 squares of underwater revetment placed each year to keep the giant river in place.